All I see is a carrot top. Time for Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Friends. Holla, shy town Scream ATL. Shout, Carolinas. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Friends. We are in the building. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and friends. I am Laura Simmons. I am Margaret Green. I am. Oh, look at it. I'm sorry for cutting you off. I it serves right. you right. It serves you right. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Ursula. Well, y'all know I'm Ursula. I'm done. <laughs> Scared it out. Okay. See? Oh, um, uh, I, I, my name is Mary Day. All right, all right, y'all. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, somebody said, well, hello, everyone. Hey, hello. Hi, hello. Hi. Hi. Facebook user. Tell us who you are, Facebook user. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for Good tuning in to our show today. Um, we have a very special, special guest today. We have Mr. Dan Jacobs here today with us. He's a um, casting director. Um, photographer uh he's an actor actually he he acted on a few shows here in chicago Woo-hoo. so yeah we get to talk to him and we get the fan yes yeah, Frederick. Frederick. Hey, so we get Frederick. to talk to him and ask him a couple of questions and you know the good stuff y'all but before we get started i wanted to say this i wanted to read something to you guys i wanted to say this um psalms 23 one, it said, the Lord is out, is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Who, who, oh, yes, I do. I have everything I need. Thank you, Lord. And I just wanted to just say that today. <clears throat> and, and then, yeah, then I wanted to get into this thing about the gas station, guys. Did y'all hear about the man, the uh, gas station manager um, that got fired? Um, he, Change, uh, he was accidentally trying to change the prices of the gas tanks and he put it at 0.69, so it was 69 cent. It was Where? Be, it's, it's in, um, uh, what was that rancho something? Rancho, so I, I don't know, I don't even remember where it was at, but mm. wherever it was, he was like 69 cent. He put he accidentally put it at 69 cent, it was supposed to be six dollars and 99 cent, and he accidentally <laughs> put it at 6.99. I wish I was there. Yeah, me too. It said that the line was wrapped around the gas station. I bet. (laughs) And they said that, uh, so he said, so he got fired because the company lost $20,000. So (laughs) his sister-in-law went online and she started a GoFundMe account. He ended up getting the money back because what he's trying, he wanted to do is he wanted to give the money back to the company because he felt bad because it was, it was an error. And um, he said that if they, if by chance, if they'll give him his job back, he surely will take it back. So he was a manager at the uh, what gas station that was. I think it was Shell. Bro, it would have been a swap. Y'all want this money? Give me my job. I, I wouldn't even went back. Yeah, yeah, that's now, nah, yeah. I mean, but it's a mistake. It was an honest mistake. So it was a mistake. That's why I don't think they should. Um, yeah, I don't think they should have fired him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's yeah. exactly. It's like, I don't mean, know. I mean, you, you don't value me. I mean, I mean, I mean, anybody can make a mistake like that, you know? Yeah, that's I, I guess because they all. I mean, they already making hand over fist profits as it is. That's what they get. Exactly, they price Tell them. Tell them. Yeah, yeah, a lot taking of them money. Is. A a lot so of they them. taking um, they should up take um taking advantage of the little people. With this get because of the war in Ukraine, they're trying to say that's the reason why the gas is high. No, y'all just being greedy. Yeah. They probably the name the devil. Yeah. yeah, 
That is so and, true. And you know what? I, I noticed that in the areas where you know less fortunate, yeah, lower income, mm-hmm. is much higher. Higher, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is that is so wrong. It's um, always been that way. They yeah, just right. make the same way with food. Same thing. Yeah, they just make it really, really difficult for them. That you know. Okay, I feel a lot too. Mm-hmm. Too. So you smell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then y'all, so here's another one. Here's another story. So this is out of Bridgeport, Con- Connecticut. Um, man was driving a, a commercial bus, uh, has been charged with 38 counts of reckless endangerment after blacking out at the steering wheel uh, while snacking on gummies. Uh, he says he didn't know um, they were infused with uh, THC. Marijuana. Yep. <laughs> the driver had 38 passengers Whoa. on his bus. Police found him slumped over unconscious and in the driver's seat. Um, next next to him was an open package of Smokies, eatable uh, cannabis infused uh, fruit, cru- f- oh, fruit no. chews. Uh, <laughs> he tested um, the test showed he had high levels of uh, THC in his bloodstream. Yeah, he was high. Active ingredients know, of right? cannabis. Seed. Yeah, he was high as kite. Lunchies, all right. Yeah, he, said, oh, he didn't Tyler. know he was eating huh? edible. I mean, gummy. The the THC CBD, whatever they were. He didn't know he was eating those. No, Girl, he, you he, know. he said that he wasn't a regular. He he wasn't somebody that regular do. But um, why you asking the question? Why you, at, why you taking it? Why you? At I'm work? asking a question. Oh, she got a question. Oh, go ahead, sugar. No, no, no. no. Asking a question. What oh. was it? Oh, I don't know. Ah. I don't know. It didn't say, they didn't show What y'all think? Summer. What y'all think? Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> it was one of us. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that. Because think one of us would have been in the back of the bus. But the, the gummies? Like, oh, uh, yeah, okay. What do you okay. think, baby? Whatever. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway, he was he, he said got he caught. his chew on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you imagine he had that bag, of, he had that bag of gummies. He was probably dogging them things too. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. He's not in trouble. <laughs> yeah, thirty-eight counts. He, he, because. I, I'm just asking, you know, about, you know. He yeah, because they're out. supposed to legalize this all out, you know, but. He gonna get off. <laughs> nah, I don't know. That's but what anyway. I'm saying. That's what I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh-huh. Is he really in trouble? Okay. Yeah. What? So y'all heard about the, uh, I, I like to tell uh, about good things that happen too also. Amen. So in Las Vegas, a local woman received the surprise of a lifetime after she hit a big one at the slot machine on Wednesday. She hit 500K. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, she was wow. playing the Buffalo um, Legends. She was playing oh, one of them slots awesome. called the Buffalo Legends and, uh, out there in the, uh, at one of those casinos. That's the name of the casino or that's the name of the slot machine? No, that's the name of the slot machine. Okay, I'm Buffalo, Buffalo Legends. Legends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> was then, it the quarter machine? How much she play? A quarter? They, she, it didn't say. They didn't say. They didn't go into all that detail. They just <laughs> told you she won, you know, because they was happy for the lady, baby. Okay, hey, don't it? I just want to know because when I go, that's why I'm be looking for the Buffalo Legends. <laughs> she don't even play the slot machine, but I'm going to play when I go. I'm going to drop that. She's going to win too. You're going to win too. And you better I mean, come back and share. Share. Sharing is caring. Then, right. um, in other news, I wanted to mention this before we get to our guest. Um, there was an 11 year old boy in India. Um, he fell in an 80 foot whale. Um, and his best friend and, and a frog and a snake kept him company for four days. Um, it took them 105 hours to get this young man out of there. Um, he fell in there on Friday, June the 10th, and they got him out last night. I mean, um, June the 14th at 11 p.m. Huh? A snake and a frog kept him company. He said a snake what? and a frog kept him coming. They didn't harm him. Neither one of them harmed wow. him. They kept him company, though. Yeah. So, so he had all kind of lost it. 
He oh. got old, was he? He was 11 years old. Okay. Yeah, so he was 11 years old. Well, but, you know, that's just, I, okay. I just think that, you know, th things like that, I believe, I believe that's divine intervention when that happens like that. Yeah. And the reason why I said it, because like the young man, remember the one, the, the little boy that got, got snatched by the gator that time? And they and um when they found him, he was dead because the, the gator had drowned him. But he had he didn't kill him. He didn't you know eat him. Oh, up. maul him they up. Put him anything. on the. They, they actually found him on the bank of of, of the of the um thing. He, wow. You know, you know. So I was like, that was divine intervention for he, yes. He 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 his his life was taken, but his parents didn't have to try to get him out of a body of a of a gator. He was still wow. intact. He was a little boy. I think he was like four, three yeah. or four years old. I'm not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guys, um, I think it's time for us to bring out our guests for today. But I wanted to say this before I said any before I get to our guests, though. I want to say this. You know, um, family is important, but you can't let family make a butt out of you. You know, I just mm -hmm. wanna just wanted to say that. You know, you can't let That's family true. make a butt out of you. So if you know you and have they are, they're in their feelings yeah. or whatever the case may be, let them stay in their feelings and and so be it. You know, you but you can't let that stress you out. You can't let you know um them put that pressure on you and feeling that you did something wrong to them, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes people will do that. They they have a tendency of trying to make you feel bad. So I just wanted to say that. But let's bring our guest out. He's a very interesting man. We have with us today um, Dan Jacobs. He is a um, uh, casting director, photographer, smoker. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean smoke? What kind of smoker? <laughs> well, we asked him. Right. Hey. hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, Dan. How are you today? How are you doing, ladies? Hello. Hi, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just a cigarette. Okay. <laughs> she want to make sure you ain't smoking no joint. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I heard your edible segment, so I was trying to add, uh, add on to that, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Smoke crazy. Oh, yeah. I I want to also send a shout out to at &T. Thank you guys. I hope you're watching, you know, thank you for your assistance. And, um, you know, I just wanted to shout y'all out for that. I know I'm not getting paid to shout y'all out or nothing, but I just want to shout y'all out. Your I some, yes. I got, I had some very good people that really assist me today. And I, you know, I truly appreciate them. at &T, you good in my book for now. We truly <laughs> appreciate them too. From out at freezing. <laughs> you said what? Yeah. We can really appreciate them too from all that freezing Tuesday. Yeah, but I think it was because of the weather, because it was a lot of folks that was going through mm -hmm. uh, real bad storms and stuff. And it was shutting their power down, their computers down. It was so much stuff going on because I heard a lot of people that was talking about it. So that yeah. could have been it, Ursula. But I'm back, baby girl. I'm back. <laughs> get your hand out my pocket. You better get your hand out my pocket. You put your cat woman glasses. <laughs> oh my God. I'm back, baby. You remember that? Clifton Davis said, Mama, I'm back. <laughs> Here we go. So, Dan. Baby, I'm back. Dan, Dan, Dan. So, tell us about yourself. Tell us, give, give people. Now, I know you long winded. So just make it, make it a how, little How long short winded can I be? Very, very, very long. No, don't go there. But go ahead. Give them a little bit, a little bit about yourself. Tell them a little bit about you. Well, a little bit about me. I uh, well, currently I'm I'm helping cast Laura's uh, film that she's putting together here, and okay. uh, big pleasure to work with her on that. So. Um, that's why we're, we're, we're currently uh, chatting up and, and doing some different things uh, in the Chicago area and beyond, you know, but um, I, I do photography. 
casting. I, he was I did some to... acting. I, uh, I I come from a, a business background, and then I've been in the entertainment business for about you know, about 10, 12 years now, something like that. Um, but I worked on the TV show Chicago Fire a lot. That, that's where I got a lot of my uh, really education and training about the business. Uh, mm-hmm. Worked on that for the first six seasons and in both casting and then uh, acting on the show as well. I just had a small part. I played one of the office workers like in the background there. And uh, what was really cool about it is, is it was real small, intimate scenes. So they treated us pretty much like the stars. We hung out with the stars the whole time. Uh, it gave me a chance to be on the set, you know, four or five days a week and, you know, 10, 12, 15, 17 hours a day sometimes. And I learned so much being on that, you know, from the lighting to the directing to the acting to, and to absolutely everything having to do with the productions. Uh, Chicago Fire is the gold standard of things in Chicago. The crew, the way it's put together, you know, Dick Wolf, the whole shebang, and the food. Oh my God, Mario's catering, the best in Chicago. There is nothing that compares. <laughs> oh, look at and, him. You uh, see that? First thing he said about the food. You see that, people? You see that? That's Chicago <laughs> for you now. <laughs> no, I was, I was not in my head because one of the great things about being on movie sets is the food because they treat you like royalty. Depending on the set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go work on Shameless and, and they stick to their name on Shameless. They try not to feed you. <laughs> they try wow. to pay you, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I actually had my... my paycheck forged by the by the upm of the of the show at one point and it, 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 they fixed it you know what i mean but they were trying to chart they were trying to pay me half of what they owed me you know i'm wow. like you guys really stick to your name don't you wow <laughs> they had no shame that time oh yeah i actually i was the extras coordinator on set one year for them and i had i went and stole the food from the stars area and brought it to the extras because they didn't give the extras any food and i'm just daring somebody to say something i'm like go ahead say something nobody did <laughs> what are they gonna what are they gonna do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah they they serious when they come to that when they cater that food for them sets when they're right. doing movies and stuff because they always make the extras eat last they yeah they have they the so the stars have to eat first well there's a pecking then, order yeah oh yeah, yeah. But they there's have, a reason for that. They don't do that oh, yeah. for ego. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah They're the ones I, I that have get to be, get back and be prepared and ready to rock. Mm-hmm. And everybody else kind of fills in, you know. Them and the crew have to eat first and get everything ready, you know. And you know how it is. It, it, you hurry to wait in this business, too. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. they expect you to hurry up and run over here. And then you're going to stand there for about an hour. Yeah. And then they're going to then they're going to use you. <laughs> you know? I remember I remember I was on a set of um, one of the shows and they was um, they had, you know, a little meal for everybody and stuff. And so they had catfish. So, you know, good and well, the catfish going to go faster <laughs> than anything up there. So the, they so this one guy, um, this one lady was in line ahead of me. So it was one piece of fish left. So she won. She was like, "I just want a little piece of it." So she takes her hand, she breaks it in, in half, and I'm like, "Hmm." I said, "I'll pass on that piece of it." Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, "How do you go thing. and take?" Right. That's what I said. I end up saying that to her, and she's like, "Well, I just wanted a little piece." I said, "Well, you don't do it like that. You should have took a fork or something, or a knife or something, <laughs> to cut it in half. Right. You don't take your hand. Nobody know where you had your hands. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna eat something that somebody else." You know, I don't know where you had your hands. You might have been in your booty before you. This, you oh, know. thanks, Laura. <laughs> well, y'all know. You know how I am. Right. <laughs> that reminds me, I got called to a set. I had to bring pictures to a director. It was a TV show called Mind Games uh, that was on ABC. And uh, I got to the set, and it was it was like 95 degrees outside, just hot as heck. And they had the breakfast still outside and they had locks and bagels and i haven't had locks in so long i'm like all right this has been out here for two hours but i'm going to eat it anyway i got food poisoning so (laughs) i was definitely ill for like 48 hours and i was doing a ton of casting for the show i couldn't take any time off so yeah i was half dead for that that was terrible learned my lesson yeah (laughs) oh yeah lesson yeah that's just like having eat potato salad at a, at, a, at a picnic in a park. Exactly. <laughs> on a summer day. Yeah. yeah. 
You get yourself a bee and salmonella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Dan, tell us about how the process works with uh, casting when you cast somebody you know, for a part. Casting is crazy. It is absolutely insane. Matter of fact, I, I put up a concept some years back, and I'm thinking about bringing it back, about doing a show just about casting. Okay. <laughs> so if there's a TV show or a movie that needs to be cast, I want to have a live TV show that is broadcast like on, on YouTube or something that shows the process of the casting. Because it's so ridiculous most people wouldn't believe it if you told them they have to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Things that you get submitted to you, you give people specific directions of how to submit or a manager will do it or a, an agency will send something to somebody. And the things they send back, they don't even include their name. There's no phone number. You have no clue yep. who they are. Sometimes there's no picture. You know, they just they yeah. don't follow. And they follow maybe one of the seven directions that they had. You know what I mean? So it's hilarious. And then those are the people who will email you back two, three days later going, did I get the part? How come you haven't gotten a hold of me? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You didn't say nothing. It's, it's, it's just so funny you said that because you know someone did that to me for real, for real. Oh, yeah. And just recently. Oh, yeah. it'll happen to you all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's funny. It, 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 that's one funny aspect, aspect of it. Plus, some of the things they say, some of the things they send in, it's, it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. So that part of it's rather interesting. What's fun is it's 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 like a human jigsaw puzzle, you know. Mm -hmm. And even though somebody is submitting for one thing, you know, they might fit something else more and then switching them over to this. You know, I worked at Empire the first season and I was on that set a lot. Uh, wow. Lee Daniels, it was hilarious. <laughs> Every day he would line up the extras if he was directing that episode he would line up the extras and recast them on the spot <laughs> almost nobody did what they were originally <laughs> supposed to do you know what i mean they'd be like you you're gonna do this now you you're going home you're too ugly don't you ever apply for any oh. of my shows again <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Off crying I, I called him the black um uh what's that guy that was on american idol he used to harass everybody I mean, cow. I, mean, cow. I love simon, simon cow. Cow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was like the black simon cow i call him i would just i would stop working or whatever i was doing and just watch him he was so funny but he was right on, you know what I mean? Some people just shouldn't have been there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wow. So, wow. And he was, I'll tell you, he, the reason got, one of the reasons why he's so successful is he does not settle. He gets a vision and he doesn't let anybody talk him out of it. <laughs> you know, everyone's always trying to be like, oh no, we don't have that. So we're going to settle for this. He's like, no, go find that. Or we're closing production for the day. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So, or he'll be like, I saw this person. Where is this person? Find out where they are, who they are, and get them for this spot. And then people go on a wild goose chase, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. That's fun. He, he, he would switch things up, and I was always ready, you know? So, so my, did he have like, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, my classmate um, is cousins with him, with Lee Daniels, and he, he would go up and work with him. I don't know if you ever met him or what his name is, William Lee Can. And he, but he said he learned a whole lot from him. He's a genius, Lee Daniels. He's a genius. He's got a bit of an attitude, <laughs> but he's an absolute genius. Like, there was a lot of fighting on that set. Him and uh, Terrence Howard didn't get along too well. And Terrence wow. Howard is the nicest guy on the planet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, wow. he was too nice. He talks too much, and then he gets other people in trouble all the time. <laughs> you know? Oh, Terrence Howard? Terrence Howard, yeah. He's the nicest guy you will ever meet in your life. Just just an absolute wow. sharers to work with. But he talks a lot. <laughs> wow. And he'll talk to people who aren't supposed to talk to him or just talk too much, to, you know, and he just delayed things. Whenever, whenever he had big scenes, it was always delayed. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And Taraji just never came out of character. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she, she, she made that show. She was yeah, she unbelievable did. Yeah. in that show. I'll never forget. I was casting Chicago Fire. I was going out to have a cigarette. And I'm, I'm looking down at my cigarette pack. And all of a sudden, there's this nice round button, stretch pants. And I'm like, I look up and I'm like, it's Taraji. <laughs> I'm like, Taraji, I'm like, what are you doing here? You know, <laughs> she's like, oh, Empire's going to be starting next month. I'm here to, to prep for it and stuff. I'm like, 
oh, very cool, you know. But she was worried because she had parked in front of the building, and she was worried that she was going to get towed. And she actually parked right where Mario's Catering usually parks. I'm like, well, that's the catering guy's spot. That's the number one guy anywhere. You never want to steal his spot. <laughs> if, if, no. if people don't eat, they get angry around here, you know? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. She moved her That's... car. <laughs> she moved her car. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she was, she was very, very – everybody on that show was real nice until the one guy lost his mind a little bit. and then, Yeah. And then the show was over. <laughs> That's another show. And he was – such a nice guy and so talented you know and yeah he was how that all we knew out. we 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 were saying we was saying that this dude he gonna be his singing career finna take off then all of a sudden right. all this stuff started happening i'm like oh my goodness he I had, if he he had one of the himself. nicest voice yeah everything oh my the, god that guy can delivery is an actor he was he was he yeah. had it all you know yeah one one of his songs was called tell the truth Pardon? You said what? I said wasn't one of his songs that he sung on there was called Tell the Truth. I Ooh. think so. I think that was his. Tell the truth. Yeah. Like, oh, you... go ahead, sing it, Mary. No, 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 no. I was just. Uh. I just <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> Who said he didn't? I had, I had his, I, you know what? I believed him at first. I really did. Me, did, me too. I was. Oh, actually, everybody did. I had a uh, witch call it up on my Facebook page because I, I didn't believe it. I was like, no, no, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. And then when I started, things started sounding a little funny there. Then I started feeling bad. I took that stuff off my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, like, oh, no. No one find out what's happening for real before you start saying that. I think because with him, I was I was totally shocked. I was yeah, like, oh, I could not he believe He was an up and coming star. He yeah. was gonna, he was getting ready to blow up. That dude was getting That's ready almost to the only up. thing he could have done to screw up his career at that point. You know, yeah. that's that's how good of a projection he Actually, had at yeah. that point. You know, terrible. Because I mean, he had his because his sister is very talented. Oh, I didn't know that. Is she? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. she sure is. She the one was in that movie. Uh, I'm gonna stand up and see me cry. That's oh, yeah. all right because I like the way I. Lie. You, you know, know, when she was dating that guy, she was dating the guy. Uh, she was married. Uh, what's the name of that movie? She was married, and so she met this guy that was rich, and and he took advantage. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, she ended up. Yeah, she ended up in a bad situation. Leaving her husband, right? She left her husband. I think she ended up with AIDS. Yeah, she did. She was with Calvin, the one named kid that played Calvin, and um the other show. Charlie Perry, House of Pain. Yeah, also in um Lovecraft Country. Did y'all no. watch that? Uh-uh. Yeah, she was no. also in that movie. Um, I think a movie that I think was it Denzel or was it Lawrence Fishburne when he was they was um doing um oh it was like um it was it something with black history or something. I can't remember the name of it. It was and um she was one of the characters. I cannot remember the name of the movie. Because I'm trying to remember whether or not it was Lawrence Fishburne or was it Denzel. Because it was one of them. Oh, the great debaters. Are you talking about that her? one? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good good answer. Good answer. Oh, no. <laughs> that girl. When I do that team, when I get my team together, Ursula don't be on my team. Right. Uh -uh, I already, nope, I already claimed her. No, no, no. no. Oh, Listen, you oh, you ever seen girl she was on my team. Did I said it first. No man, no show girlfriends, mm -hmm. huh? You remember all she said, She all <laughs> man. She said, looks like it's me and Ursula what? against you three. <laughs> Nadine, you just got here. Really? Really? <laughs> I, Listen, I okay. love Journey. Okay, I Ursa, who is, what movie her. was that? What was that other movie where she caught AIDS? She had AIDS. She, um, she met that Temptation. guy. Temptation. Temptation. Fight, fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, can I please talk about the great debaters right quick? Her her role, she was so authentic in that movie. And when she did that speech where she came into her own and when she was like, well, can you please tell me when the time is? She was like, today. I was like, I, I'm getting chills now. I love her. 
and an actress. Her lover, anyway. So Dan, can good. you tell? Can you tell Ursula is a um, up and coming actress? Um, she's, oh, yeah. she's taking acting classes. Yeah, she's taking acting classes now. Oh, Margaret, wow. um, Margaret is an up and coming comedian. Um, <laughs> she's taking comedy classes. Um, <laughs> Meredith is a motivational speaker. She's taking motivational speaking classes. And I am who I am. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, in a certain view with those glasses, if you can get both screens in there, you look like a super villain. Oh. And the screens are shining in your eye like that. <laughs> you got there's, there's a new book for you. That's a new book for me. Let me tell you something, Ursula. Huh? Let me tell you something, Ursula. When, when it comes to learning about acting, there's only one rule of acting. I was just working with somebody with some auditions right before we went on here. And I was just telling her this. It, and I tell everybody this, you know, it's there's performing and then there's acting. Most people perform and then the good ones act. Um, acting is becoming the character. Once you become that character, you can't make a mistake. You know, it, if you could truly become that character, that's the only thing you ever have to learn. <laughs> if you could you do know that, what I, you know, my coach said to me now. the first day, my coach said, um, we're the first thing I want to tell you is that we're not acting, we're being, we're becoming. Yeah. That's the first thing you told me. That that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And most people don't get that. They want to perform. And now theater, yeah. that's different. That's that's more of a performance and you know, you know over the top and you know yeah. overdo it. But and, and acting, you're not supposed to. No one's supposed to know you're acting. Right, like, like he said. Yeah, right. I, I guess that's why Denzel Washington is such a great actor because he becomes every character that every he plays. Time. Every he time. Angela yeah. Bassett, another one who does that. She de oh, yeah. she becomes the every character that they that she that she plays. So it's like um, so that <laughs> that's understandable. That. Remember when she did that? Don't do that. Don't do that, Jackie. <laughs> Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. You I know who another was? Um, Chad <laughs> Bozeman. He was an uh, awesome actor. Yeah, he was. He, he, he was. You believe, you forget when, when I was watching James Brown. Yeah. I that yeah. I was watching a movie. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Oh, James. Yeah, he did become, he came, became James Brown, especially when he did that. Oh, I never seen that. <laughs> Anytime he met, got That's ready good. to say, when, um, yeah. if somebody um, said anything or did something that he didn't like, he. I was like, man. Oh, wow. I never seen that movie. Yeah, I he go he, he really embodied oh, okay. James Brown in that movie. He really oh, did. Okay. And look at who just, the, uh, the guy that just died, Ray Light Leota. I mean, oh, he could, yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Became, he became everything too much, <laughs> you know? Too much. <laughs> yeah. He, he was, in, was unbelievably in character every time. That's in Goodfellas. Every time. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And those are the ones, those are the ones that give you chills. You know, yeah. those are the ones that make you cry. You know, those are the ones you feel completely, you know, no matter how good maybe even the writing is or the directing or the editing, if you can be that character, you can make up for a lot of other things, you know, yeah. and, and bring that audience in, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, Dan, you know, I've been telling Dan that uh, I think that he should manage some of the careers of some of the people and stuff and so Dan like but he says he, that to me he, he don't want to listen to me <laughs> but I could tell you right now I, I'm sure um Margaret probably will be one of your people that will want you to manage her career you know yeah yeah get her into some of these cl clubs yeah because I want to do acting and and, and and comedian I mean um comic but um comedy. I would like to do acting, are you funny like other than too. making fun of Ursula huh right she got <laughs> right here she she got Can some voices. Right I so do. <laughs> yeah, she got some voices. Come on, give us uh, give give us some of your uh comedy stuff. Give us oh. a skit, one of your skits. Give them one, one of your Ursa. skits. You, I'm, you gonna gonna I'm gonna do Ursula right quick. Oh, you gonna do me? Uh, <laughs> okay. You put your hand up. 
<laughs> Man, don't don't turn oh, on me. Okay. I got a question. I'm trying to give her material. I'm trying to. Help okay, her. I got you. Okay, I got you. Um, she I have a question. Could you always say um? Oh. <laughs> I heard that one already. She said that um all the time. Um, I have a question. And, um, oh, look how slow she's talking. Oh, that's how you do. You do that's how, <laughs> yes, that's exactly how you do. You, you, you do it you every time. She was telling them about her being a Virgo. Oh my goodness. She said, <laughs> she said, what did she say? She said, I'm a Virgo. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I said, okay, introduce yourself, tell yourself, tell them, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. What did she do? Um. <laughs> <laughs> And then she starts saying, what did she say, Meredith? She said, um, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> um, and it's like, nobody cares that you a Virgo. What is this? Float on with you. What your <laughs> Like, Larry, <laughs> hi, and I'm a Virgo. And <laughs> <laughs> she was giving her her son to write the book. She was, giving, she was giving us her whole book. You know what I'm sensing? You know what I'm sensing? And I hate that we have to air this out in front of company. But I'm sensing a lot of hate and everything here. Because Are you first not jealousy? No, I mean, no, you know. she's acting up again. No, no, no. Because she's a Virgo. No, because she said she was sensitive, too. She extra sensitive. I am oh, sensitive. Yeah, sensitive. But I got one, two, three, y'all. But it's all oh, in girl, me. It's, it's all, all in all love. Good. Don't even act like that, Ursula. No, I, it's too late. It's too late. Uh oh, she about to throw us under the bus now. She's going to go get the wig and she going to... Uh -oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but... um. All right, Margaret, I'll give you an easy one. Okay, what? Let's hear your whoopee. Whoopee, whoopee. Goldberg? Oh, yeah. gosh. Whoopee. Oh, I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't, um... Girl, go! That was almost it. You almost, you almost had it. That was almost yeah, it. Yeah, I, I have never <laughs> imitated her. But go, she's um, easy. The movie goes. I don't remember that. Just grunt a lot. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you sound just like a... <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> um, now, now I'm saying um. Because <laughs> you know why? Because God don't like ugly. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, because he like beautiful. And that's why he loves me, and I'm a Virgo. <laughs> But um um I'm trying to think I, I'm trying to think with uh Whoopi Goldberg when she um trying to like think of some of the characters that she's done. Do your hillbilly impression. No, you want me to do that. That's the way you can this show. Uh, um oh gosh. Well yeah, I can I can do one of those characters. Um I just want to let you know I don't appreciate how you people been doing us during this election time. We want to be able to vote whenever we feel like it. We don't want you all telling us what to do because you people got issues. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do. That's what they say all the time. We right. we are um, you people. So, Ursula, give us a little piece of your acting skill. What piece would you like? Um, Carrot top. Act like, act like you like Margaret. <laughs> no, that's going to be hard. Margaret, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Please don't talk about Margaret. Margaret, Margaret. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you're here, Margaret. Oh, my God. Are those new glasses? Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me sit out. Girl, please, please model that blouse. Please. That's oh my right. god, that was so fly. Everybody do it. Come on. Everybody do it. <laughs> do the Margaret. Okay. I am. Margaret. I am. Okay. You got so, anything else to say, Margaret? You got anything yes. else? <laughs> All right, Meredith. Give, give us your little uh version. Give us your version. Um, let me of, see. Of um, what, honey bunny? What you what you need? What y'all want? Uh, uh give what us Tamar Braxton. <laughs> 
Oh, she just sounded like her too. She just sounded like her. Cause it's giving me life. It's giving me life. You tried it. You tried it. You sound just like her too. Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm crazy. Yes, yes, yes. So you yes, see what kind are. of talent we have we here? We got issues. There, there you we go. Issues yeah. all around. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I know you're a casting uh, director, so you can cast them for some movies and stuff. <laughs> yeah, look right. I, I, I wouldn't mind being in something. Really, I wouldn't. I, I, I know you uh, wouldn't mind being in something. Tell um, them. <laughs> see, you know tell what? Them. I, I, you know what? Don't make me. <laughs> I was tell going them to Georgia. Tell them something that you would do to help them, you know, that you can help them. Give them some kind of advice or something, Dan. Yeah, I can use as it. As far as uh, getting, advancing in the business and, and getting your foot in the door and all that type right, of stuff. Right, right, yes. So, I mean, this business is different than, than most businesses. You know, in this business, I don't care if you've gone to school. I don't care what kind of training you've had. You got to start at the bottom and you got to work your way up. And when I say bottom, I mean free. <laughs> right. Free. Mm -hmm. like you, you have to prove yourself and show what you can do. As an actor, you need something called a reel, which is basically a video portfolio. Mm -hmm. And in order to get a reel, you have to work on things. And in order to work on things, you have to show that you're talented. You can't show that you're talented until you work on things. So it's a yes. very, you know, hard so you have to work on the smaller things, um, be it student films or small indie films and those types of things, and then show what you could do, build up. And a reel is going to be not spots where you don't have speaking parts, but spots where you actually have at least a one line or more. So and then that's going to be edited together with all of your different spots. And then that's going to show your range of what you can do as an actor. So um you want to be with the agencies and at the same time you want to hustle on your own always have your ear out there of what's going on um, there's different casting websites different casting um, uh, emails that you can get sent to you and then you can work as an extra on these sets which is a great way to get experience so chicago fire chicago med you know all the different chicago shows and different movies that come through I tell everybody, especially people who have gone to film school and think they know everything, go on these sets as an extra and study them. Like I told you, like I did when I first started, study them and you'll learn more on these sets than you did in four years of college, because this wow. is how it's actually done, you know. Um, and then that way you get some nice connections that way as well. And you get comfortable with being on a set. If, if you're a real good actor and you get a good gig and you end up on Chicago Fire and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, I'm on Chicago Fire and you freeze up or you freak out or you just suck, <laughs> you know, you you just maybe ruined your whole career, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you've been on that set a few times and you know maybe one or two people and you remember the director or whatnot, you're going to have more of comfort level and a more of a being able to own the place type of feel to you and that that way you'll come across better on, on film as well. Mm -hmm. I learned a ton being on those sets, as long as you pay attention. You know, I joke around a lot and I'm always, you know, laughing and joking with people. But when I'm on a set, people think I'm a jerk because I don't talk to anybody. I just study. <laughs> I'm just focusing. I'm just staring and focusing and analyzing everything. Um, and especially the stars. Like at rap parties, I'll be like, hey, sorry, I was a jerk. You know, and it seemed like I was not being somebody who wanted to talk to you, but I was, you know, trying to, trying to study the lighting guy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to study the supervisor or whatever happened to be going on, you know? Um, but people understand, you know, um, that, that you're, you're trying to learn because everyone, every, every time you're on a set, even if you're doing the same scene over and over in the, in the same spot, it's always different. And you learn something every single time. And you just got to take something from that and continue to grow every time, whether you're in front of or behind the camera. It doesn't matter, you know. Okay. How and then, you... I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. 
I was going to say, how do you get a real, get to uh, put together reels, a real portfolio, a portfolio if you don't have any jobs? Like, That's just it. You got to work on those small indie films. You got to do research of who you're working with, with those, make sure they've had finished products already. There's a lot of people who start things and don't finish them, you know, um, people who are juniors and seniors at DePaul, Columbia, they have to finish those products. There's a lot of good, you know, young filmmakers that go to those schools, um, getting involved with that in something like that. And I shouldn't say this, hopefully nobody's watching, but, um, <laughs> lie to them. Yeah, I've done lead stuff. Look at my resume. I've been a lead in this. I was a lead in this. And then go there and see if you could do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? See if you could pull out that type of part or any part for that matter. Um, and then if they have to recast it, it's not costing them any money. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And on a regular set, you'll get blacklisted and you'll get, you know, <laughs> don't ever hire this person. They suck. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I, a lot of people I know have done that. And then they, they figure out either I have it or you don't, you know, and people sometimes even have it and they realize it's not for, you know, this is a tough business. You're sitting on a set for 10, 12, 15, sometimes 17, 18 hours, you know, oh, and half of that's downtime where you're sitting there going, what am I going to do? You know, it's very boring on the downtime, you know, so you got to be able to handle all those different aspects and then go from being half asleep, waiting for them to start to, being the best actor in the world, <laughs> you know, and being able to, to turn on that light real quick, you know. One guy that's amazing with that, my God, uh, Jason Begay from Chicago PD. Mm -hmm. I've never seen somebody go from doing one thing to, to spot on acting as good as anybody could in the world. Like that guy, he's, he's really good. He's very oh, good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you work on those, and there's actually companies now that do set up scenes just for people's reels because this is a huge problem in the industry now some of those companies are good some of those companies aren't good um so you got again do your research on that um and it's that's that's the hardest part about getting started is getting that real you know so do the student films do the indie films research the director research the writer research the people that are running the film see if there are other uh, projects have been finished, you know, if they have go for it, you know, um, and money, I mean, money doesn't matter when you're starting out and it shouldn't matter. You should be wanting to pay somebody to even be on a set, honestly, because that's, you're not going to be able to do it any other way. Um, and plus, I mean, you, when you're working on a good set with good people and a good crew and you got all the positive flow going, there's nothing like it. It's, it's very addicting. It's very fun. Um, and if you're good at it, you just work your way up through it. There's no money at first, but there's some good money at the end. But if people are in it for the money, they shouldn't be in it anyway. You know, um, it, it's about expressing yourself. It's about the fun of the acting, putting magic together and all the, the smoke and mirrors and all that and creating something cool, you know. So. What do you enjoy more, um, the casting part of it or the acting? That's a great question, and I ask myself that all the time. I'm an empath. I don't know if you guys know what an empath is, but empaths feel other people's emotions and feelings like sometimes even more than they do. So when I'm cast, well, let me let me back up a little bit. My favorite thing is like watching American Idol, watching people realize their dreams and having people's dreams come true and that type of thing. I it, it just it it tears me up inside and makes me feel so good at the same time. So when I'm casting, like I've cast scenes where I've had 500 people on a, on a TV set before. And a part of me is with every single one of those people. And a lot of these people, this is their dream come true to be on one set one time in their life, you know, and it's, it's a really, really cool feeling. Now acting though, <laughs> that's a lot of fun. That is a lot, a lot of fun. And there's, there's nothing like that, you know, you, you see a lot of these actors get hooked on bad drugs or get get bad mentally or whatever. They kill themselves or they OD or it's because they're trying to recapture that feeling they get on a set as an actor. Same thing with the musicians. It's the same type of feeling. Nothing 
replaces that. It's it's one of the best feelings you'll ever feel in your life. So it's like rush. Michael Jordan is having one of his best games and everything slows down. It's kind of like that with acting all the time. It's just you have that adrenaline rush and that feel, and there's nothing. Like when I first got started and then I, we took a break and there was there was no work, I'm like, is there a kindergartner putting on a production somewhere? I need to be on a set. I'm like, where can I go? You know, <laughs> it's just oh, it was wow. it's absolutely addicting. Absolutely mm. addicting. So, so how do you um so how do you know when you get like for instance you look if, if if I was looking for an agent or someone to um help me get started and get me you know get me into the business how that's do you know thing. when you get you huh that's a tough thing figuring out when you should get an agent and and when and how you do know, you know when they're legit you which know, how one most of them aren't most of the agencies most of the agents aren't there in the chicagoland area the midwest actually in general it's about agencies more so than agents um there's not many agents and and they're, they're far and few between and the ones that are around aren't that great in chicago um with that said there's only really a, a handful if not a little bit more than that of agencies that are really worth being an agency in chicago as well in my eyes Agencies are, are kind of a, a necessary evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, managers are really the way to go. There's not a lot of managers in Chicago or, or the Midwest for that matter either. Well, uh, she's not in Chicago, um, Dan. I'm in South she's Carolina. In South Carolina? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. And Earth lives in Atlanta. What's that? And Earth lives in Atlanta. Oh, you're in Atlanta? Uh-huh. Oh, they got a lot more going on in Atlanta than they do in Chicago. Yeah. Atlanta's got a ton, ton, ton going on. All right. Now, Atlanta also has central casting out there now, don't they? Do they have what? Do they have central casting in Atlanta now? I think so. So you got to get hooked up with central casting. So, so what so about Carolina? Do you know anything about the Carolinas? I have no clue. I've been there a couple of times. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. Except when it's hot. <laughs> right, right. That's the whole country right now. Yeah. Alaska's well, have you, as we speak. <laughs> well, if you find out some information on that, Dan, let me know. So but it's the same everywhere. It it's basically the right. same everywhere. Now mm -hmm. in, in LA and New York and now Atlanta, there's there's central casting. And central casting usually just takes care of TV shows, though. Movies, they like to do their own thing. Uh, but central casting, like every TV show, everything's cast through them as far as any type of supporting roles usually and any type of background and that type of thing. Um, Chicago needs a central casting, but does not have one. Um, but hook up with them. That'll get you all kinds of gigs. And then you work your and then you get a lot of contacts through there as well. Um in, in in Chicago and then in Carolina as well, then it's going to be about the agencies. I'm, I'm assuming it's more about agencies out there than agents as well. Um, that's how it is in the smaller markets. And Chicago is not really a smaller market, but it's just looked at as a smaller market by the big boys, New York, L.A., um, that type of thing. Um, but, it, I mean, Chicago has a lot going on, you know, uh, and not just the Chicago shows, but with the, with the different movies. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. So, um, but Atlanta, they have probably four times what Chicago has going on. Yeah. So you have a lot of really, really good opportunity out there. Do and, you think it's uh, a good idea to get started in commercials rather, rather than actual movies and shows? Sometimes commercials, and especially these days, they want to go with non-union actors. And that's another really good topic, too, is when do you go union when do you not go union unions expensive to join and then it also restricts you of what you can and cannot work on usually too because uh, you're not really supposed to work on then non-union projects and like i said a lot of the commercials now are going non-union because it's just a lot cheaper you know so um but those commercials pay very well <laughs> um and they're pretty much the same animal but a different animal um it's it's sometimes different casting companies you'll get different types of weird casting companies sometimes casting them and that's where being with an agency is is a necessity uh because they're the ones that are getting these reports to them of what's coming out uh, sometimes even before um, other agencies get them sometimes if they've got close ties to whoever's the 
putting the production together or the casting director is they'll get information ahead of time so it's good to be with a good agency it, it, i don't suggest being with an agency unless it's a sag agency a union agency um and then even then half of those aren't worth your time in my opinion don't you have to pay for that though the sag uh the sag yeah yeah now sag you're not going to join anyway until you have at least three speaking parts in parts, something anyway right. um and then you don't even have to necessarily join at that part you can get a temporary sag um something called a taft hartley and you can be temporary you know i'm a temporary union member for this production that i'm working on right now you know that type of thing um so it, it really depends on where you're at in your career and also what type of gigs you're looking to get too. if you're looking to not necessarily go big time on all the big you know uh movies and that type of stuff and you want to work with more local stuff and tv commercials then it, it might not be right to join the union you know yeah. uh, you also have to be on top of your game and at the point where you can handle union work you know mm -hmm. just because some idiot cast you in something and gives you three speaking spots doesn't mean you're good <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so just because you're eligible because i know a ton of people who are eligible but i don't I would never tell them to join the union because they're just not there yet. They're never going to get the work because their talent level is not up to union standards yet. Okay. So, so, so Dan, tell people where they can find you at. Uh, it depends on the night. You know, usually uh, at the bar on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing some karaoke tonight. No. Um, yes, I love karaoke. I, I love karaoke. You ever do live band karaoke? I've never tried it. So that's like a karaoke with a live band. Sure. You have to invite us out there, uh, Dan, where you at? You have to invite me and Meredith out there. Yeah. We're here in Chicago. We'll come. I, I'm, yeah. in, I'm in Chicago. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we here in Chicago. So if you, you invite us out, we'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Well, we're going to be doing some movies out. I'm in. I'm out in Moline now. I just moved from the Chicago area, and I and I now live in Moline, so I'm oh, wow. a few hours away. But I go to Chicago yeah. all the time for work, and um, we'll be doing some productions out here as well. So uh, we'll be dragging some Chicagoans this way. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I think my sister-in-law lives in Moline, and my daughter goes to Dubuque. So oh, that's not yeah. too far. It's not oh, too far. No, not too far at all. Where you are. And cool. uh, you mentioned Shameless earlier. It's funny because she actually was an extra in the first season of Shameless. Really? Um, as one of the little little kids um, with, the, with the little girl. Well, when she was a little girl in the first the season. Debbie? Yeah. He was playing yeah. with her in the park. Huh. And um, my husband did quite a few extra. He never had like a speaking part, but he was always just a, a body in there. I always mess with him because I'd be like, oh, my God, I blinked. What was you at again? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, that's probably the best show ever done in Chicago. The acting, the directing, the editing, the produce. I mean, everything on that is just flawless. What is in my Fiji. It's just the, the content was like, ooh, half the time you're sitting there with your mouth open going, did I really just see that on TV, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the call sheets I used to get, I used to be like, oh, my God. But I used to always go right to the props and see what kind of props they were using for that vomit, needles, crack ooh. pipes, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. It was hilarious. <laughs> Well, Dan, it was good having you on our show today. You know, as time is winding down, so you might want to um, just let people know um, where they can find you and, you know, not in the clubs and all that. Just <laughs> <laughs> find me on Facebook. Uh, you can also email me if you have any questions or anything like that or want me to send, if you want to send in your information if you're an actor. Uh, Dan J312, like the area code in Chicago. So Dan J three one two at Gmail. It's a very okay. simple email, um, and you can always find me on Facebook, Dan Jacobson. You can maybe find a link through here. I do a lot of uh, networking through Facebook. Not a huge Instagram fan because it chops up the pictures, uh, my photography pictures, and, and that frustrates yeah. me. So I don't use it too much, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Dan is a photographer too. Um, actually, he he did some photo shoots for me um, some years back. Um, I got some photos that he did of mine. 
So, yeah. yeah, I used to do a lot of headshots. Headshots mm -hmm. are just very boring. So I, I like to do challenging shots. I just did a waterfall shot. I like doing like sunrise shots, uh, ones that are challenging with the lighting and all that type of good stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I like a little bit of everything. I, I got a, a couple of rivers out here now, so I got to do some river shoots. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But well, it was a pleasure meeting you ladies. And then I knew a couple well. of you already a little bit, but uh, pleasure. You guys are all wonderful. You I wish you guys good. were more local. I like you, Ursula. I thought we were going to team up and kick everyone else's butt around here. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up. I'll email you. We'll get together. Let's do that. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't going to call you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold what your album? breath. Oh, don't hold your breath, Dan. You gonna what be holding your breath, and you gonna be like, the <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're gonna, gonna be, be watching TV, and you're gonna be like, is that Dan and Ursula in that TV commercial? Like, okay, <laughs> thank you. I've yeah, seen them. I see them holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> hold hands, whatever Walking we got to do. Walking on the beach. Right, right. <laughs> They're doing a. Then they you really see kind what kind of, of commercial. <laughs> <laughs> or did they walk on the beach doing a condom commercial? No. You, <laughs> you can say whatever you like. Right? You know, is that, if I'm working, I'll do it. I'll be like, baby, did you buy them? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? They don't have maxi pad commercials anymore, do they? I know. That's no, they don't. Well, nah, nah, they got the pins to... now. They <laughs> well, Dan, we want to thank you way. for coming on to our Dan, we want to thank you for coming on to our show today. Um, and we want to thank everybody that tuned in to Inspirational Talks with Laura Simmons and Friends. Um, we'll see you guys on what is today, Thursday. We'll see you on Tuesday, guys. We love you guys. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Be safe. Have a good night. All. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. So, so, so bye bye. Oh, oh, you know what I was gonna say before we get off here then. Oh, uh -uh. uh, what's the part? What's that movie? Anybody gonna will hang you, up? When you kept <laughs> when you kept holding your hands up like this, I kept saying to myself, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> so good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>